What is up guys? Today it is the Sound Alchemist coming back to you for more 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Once again, we are hitting the lore on Uriel Ventress, the Ultramarine who cares for the people and is kind of not really Ultramarine-like in his ways. But anyway, he's got a pretty badass storyline. If you guys want more intricacies into it, I highly recommend you can pick up the novels. Um, I'm not 100% sure what they're called right now. It escapes my mind. So uh, head over to the Black Library and learn more about, I believe it's three novels on Uriel Ventress. Or you can hit up the wiki or the lexicanum if you want to read about it yourselves. But for now, let's dive into part two to Ventress's Adventures in Space. So here we go. So during transit in the warp, the ship's Geller field inexplicably failed, and all those within the ship perished, except for Ventress and Passaneus. A demon known as Amphalos Demonium appeared and overpowered the Ultramarines, taking them captive on board of his demon engine. They were then transported to the Iron Warrior's homeworld, Medrangard, and they were charged with the task of retrieving the Heart of Blood from the fortress of Kaelin Gol. Threatened with the annihilation of Macrag and Ultramar, Ventress complied with Amphalos' demands. However, after the demon departed, Ventress assured Pessinius that he would never honor this pact, and that he would instead destroy this heart of blood. During this perilous journey, Ventress and Passanius encountered renegade space marines, led by the former Raven Guard Shadow Captain, Ardraic Vans. The Ultramarines followed the Renegades to their sanctuary, and they met a few remaining survivors of the 383rd Joran Dragoons, left after the Iron Warriors overran the forge world of Hydra Cordatus. Based on what he heard from the Renegades, Ventress worked out that the new Castellan of Kaelin Gol, Warsmith Hanso, had created a new factory of Chaos Space Marines, using this Heart of Blood and the Gene Seed captured from Hydra Cordatus. So Ventress led the Renegades in an assault on Kaelin Gol, which was already being under siege by Hansel's rival warsmiths, Toromino and Bersosius. After an initial encounter with Hanzo and his retinue, Ventress led his band inside the fortress, only to be captured by the Iron Warriors within. On the orders of Hanzo, Ventress was to be fed to the Demonaculi, and the rest were sent to the Savage Morticians to be killed. However, Ventress has plot armor, and he escaped and succeeded in freeing the others, and then he led them in escaping the fortress through the sewer systems. The four-way in the fortress cost them dear, as only four survived with Ventress and Pessinius. It was Vans, Colonel Mikhail Leonid, and two other renegades. The survivors were then captured by monstrous mutants, known simply as the Unfleshed, and were taken to their homeland. The unfleshed were the mutated rejects, born disfigured and without skin. Now Ventress convinced these unfleshed, who still worshipped the Emperor, to join him in his mission to destroy Kalin Gol. Vans and the other renegades abandoned Ventress, except for Leonid. Now Ventress and the unfleshed infiltrated the heart of the fortress, and while the unfleshed fought against the guards, Ventress and Pessinius freed the heart of blood. Once freed, the psychic barriers protecting the fortress fell, allowing the Amphalos Demonium to appear and fight against its bitter rival. Now during this battle between the two demons, Ventress and Pessinius made their escape, and Leonid sacrificed himself to prevent the Sarcromata from stopping them. However, the Ultramarines were cornered by Hanzo and his retinue, who outnumbered them. At the very last moment, the Unfleshed saved them by attacking and killing the entire retinue. Ventress managed to shoot Hanzo, wounding him. At the point of being defeated, the Heart of Blood conjured up a bloodstorm which killed all nearby, including the demon Kumalaba. Having been strengthened by the bloodstorm, the demon went on to defeat Amphalos Demonium and collapsed out of exhaustion in the aftermath. The Ultramarine's final actions at Madrangard was to board with the Unfleshed upon the demon engine left behind by the Amphalos Demonium to escape imprisonment beneath the fortress. 
Now I know some of this is a little rushed and doesn't really make sense, so that's why I greatly recommend you guys pick up the books that goes further into detail and you'll get a better understanding of what's going on and the battle between all these demons and the unflesh and whatnot. But anyway, let's continue on with his lore. So after departing the Eye of Terror, Ventress and Pisinius arrived on the troubled planet of Salinas. Here, they established contact with the Imperial forces, and they were taken to the Imperial Fortress to await judgment. The Imperial Guard stationed on Salinas had become corrupt and debased, having killed thousands of innocent civilians just to get to the rebel leader. As such, the remaining rebels constantly attacked the Imperial Guard whenever they could, turning Ventress and Piscinius into prime targets. While there, the unfleshed were quickly possessed by the souls of those killed, and they turned on the Imperial Guard stationed on this planet. Having detecting a strong warp influence on the planet, a detachment of Grey Knights were sent to investigate. They captured Ventress and Pisinius, and they held trials to determine their loyalty to the Emperor. After passing these trials, Ventress, Pisinius, and the Grey Knights were sent to kill the unfleshed. After incurring terrible losses, the Grey Knights returned to two to Macrag. And this is pretty much where the lore ends for our savior, Uriel Ventress. Now there's a bit more lore to Ventress. Um, if you want a little bit more into that, you can go to 40 Facts on Makar, the Demon Prince, where there's a little bit more, I guess, interaction between Sicarius, Ventress, and this demon. So check that out for more lore. But anyway guys, that comes to an end of our video. We have more 40 facts to bring you guys, which we do each and every day. Um, and also, a big, big awesomeness that just came out is that the Grey Knights are officially available to pre-order the Codex, as well as the uh, Chaos Space Marines. So if you're into 8th edition and you're playing it, greatly recommend you guys pick these up even if you don't play chaos or gray knights that way you know a little bit more as to what the competition may or may not bring on the battlefield really awesome this there i do collect gray knights so i'm definitely going to get that i still need to get the uh codex space marines but uh can't find it it's sold out everywhere but anyway guys that's all the time i have for you as always you can always support us on patreon a simple dollar a month goes a long ways to bringing you guys more epic content and giveaways we also have a Twitter and Instagram for more 40k content, and we have a Facebook page. We post each and every day on Facebook, and that's probably the best way to get in contact with us, so check it out. And as always, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. I am the Sound Alchemist, part of Sound... No, not Sound. <laughs> sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate. Sounding out. Signing out. Ugh, oh, too much sound.